The Porsche Taycan is a completely new car for Porsche, and this means that we know little about its expected depreciation. Whenever a new 911 or Cayenne is launched, you can be pretty sure that the depreciation curve will look similar to their predecessor's curve. For the Taycan though, we don't have this information, so we need to be a bit more creative. Also, what should we actually expect of the Taycan's depreciation curve? We know that the one for the Panamera is quite steep, and you can check that out by clicking on the pop-up banner right over here. Yet, we also know that Tesla's hold of value extremely well, and since both the Tesla and the Taycan are electric cars, the depreciation curve of the Taycan might be quite similar to the one of a Tesla. Now the Taycan is of course an expensive car, so the depreciation rate can end up costing you or saving you a lot of money. To figure out what this rate might be, we will have a look at today's market, the depreciation per year and the depreciation per thousand miles driven. And to put all of this in a context, we will also compare the numbers to those of the Porsche Panamera and 911. Let's kick things off by having a look at today's market. Like with any Porsche, there are a bunch of models we need to take into account. Over here we have the model year on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. Each car is displayed by a bubble and the different colors indicate the different models. We have the normal taken in red, the S in blue, the turbo in green and the turbo S in orange. And all of these include the sedans and the cross turismos, but there are only a handful of cross turismos for sale in today's market. Now naturally, prices fluctuate a lot between the different model types. The cheapest way to get into a Taycan is via the normal model, which has a median price of $100,000. And since the MSRP for one of these is $83,000, this includes on average $17,000 in options. Yet, even at $100,000, you need to pay a premium of $27,000 to get yourself into an S model. And from that point onwards, prices increase rapidly. The Turbo has a median price of $160,000 and the Turbo S of $200,000. Market supply is then also the lowest for the Turbo models, followed by the base and the S models. And since we are now up to date on today's market, let's have a look at the depreciation per year. Over here we have the median price development between April and October. Unfortunately, the Taycan is not yet so long on the market, so there's not so much data available. If we look at the price change during the last six months, then we can see that this is very small, especially for a new car. The Turbo S lost 3.5%, the normal Turbo 4%, and the S model 2.6%. And this is in line with what you could expect. The more expensive turbo models simply lose more in the beginning of their lifetime than the cheaper models. We for example also see this in the Panamera and the Macan market. Additionally, also the height of the depreciation rate is quite decent. Used car prices are close to record heights at the moment and almost everything went up in value. So in that sense, even though that the depreciation rate is low, it's a bit strange that we can't see a price increase. Yet, if we look at the underlying market characteristics, then we can see that the market trends in the Taycan market are very similar to the one in the used car market. We can see here the supply, the mileage and the model year development. And this reveals that supply plummeted in the last six months. In April 2021 there were for example 635 cars for sale versus only 150 now. And that's a drop of 76%. And you are probably aware that this has something to do with the shortages in the chip sectors. And if you are not aware, don't worry, you can click on the pop-up banner over here, which will bring you to a video which explains everything about the chip shortages. If we go back to the graph, we can also see that the median mileage increased for the Turbo and the S models. And this means that some used cars are entering the market. And this also means that we need to have a look at the price increase adjusted for this mileage increase. After all, it makes sense that today's value is lower than the one in April because the mileage increased. So let's look again at the price development over time, but adjust it now for the mileage increase. Over here we can see now that this reveals that prices actually increased slightly. For the Turbo S this is 4%, for the Turbo 3% and for the S 5%. So this means that on a like for like comparison, prices increased slightly. Hence, the depreciation per year has been very low or even non-existing. Given that used car prices are at record heights, this is something which goes for many cars. It would be interesting to see how this price development compares to the one of a Tesla. But unfortunately, I don't have that data available. What I do have is data for the 911 and the Panamera. So let's compare the Taycan to those cars and see if the value development is the same among the Porsche family. And for the sake of simplicity, we will compare the S models. Over here you can see now the mileage weighted price development for the 911 992 Carrera S, the Taycan S and the second generation Panamera. And these price developments amount from top to bottom to 12, 5 and 10%. Yet, you can see that I don't have the exact same dates for all of the cars. 
If we use the one for the taken as a reference, so between April and October, then we end up with an increase of 7% for the 9N2 and for the Panamera. And this means that we can conclude a few things. First of all, during this period, Taycan values moved in line with other Porsche models. The fact that it's an electric car didn't influence the value development during the last six months. I will keep tracking these value developments and that will reveal if this is purely a coincidence or not. Perhaps a Taycan will just follow a depreciation pattern which is similar to other Porsche models. Second, this graph reveals that there was no depreciation per year effect for the Taycan in the last six months. Values went up. But this goes almost for all cars, as prices are close to record heights. Let's see now if the same goes for the depreciation per thousand miles driven. Over here we have now the mileage to price relationship and again the 911, the Taycan and the Panamera. And you can see that the latter market has a lot more cars with a high mileage. So that means that the depreciation per thousand miles curve is more accurate for that market. In fact, if you only consider the mileage and the model year for the Panamera S, you can explain around 90% of the variation in the prices. So this means that the value development for a Panamera is well known and that there is little price uncertainty in the market. But let's focus on this graph now. If we look at the absolute numbers, then we can see that the 911 loses $990 per thousand miles driven and that is $770 and $890 for the Taycan and the Panamera. Relatively though, the Taycan and the 911 show similar results. They both lose 0.6% per thousand miles driven. For the Panamera this is minus 0.9%. So based on this graph, the depreciation per thousand miles driven for a Taycan doesn't seem to differ significantly from the other Porsches. Now before we conclude, it's key that I point out that this depreciation rate of minus 0.6% per thousand miles driven only goes for the S models. If we quickly zoom into the Taycan market and split the market by the base version, the S version, the Turbo and the Turbo S, then we can see that the height of the depreciation per thousand miles follows the price level. For the Turbo S this is minus 1.4%, for the Turbo minus 1%, for the S minus 0.6%, like we just saw, and for the base minus 0.5%. And this hierarchy is in line with what we could expect, and also with other Porsche models. Usually it goes so that the higher the price, the higher the depreciation per thousand miles driven is. And with that, let's wrap up and conclude. What can we expect of the Taken's depreciation curve? Well, during the last six months, the depreciation per thousand miles and per year were very similar to the one of the 911 992 and the Panamera. And this means that we can tentatively conclude that the Taken will follow a depreciation pattern which is similar to those cars. However, I need to stress that this is a tentative conclusion. It's only based on two time points and on a relatively short time frame. Moreover, the time points are both from a unique market situation as used car prices are at record heights. I will therefore continue to track the value development for the Takens and provide you with a new update in 6 months or so. Now if you like this data driven way of analyzing car markets but would have liked to see the analysis for a different car, let me know down below in the comment section for which car you would like to see an analysis. This Taken video was for example requested by Kyle. Andrew and Matt. While you are requesting a video, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you get notified when your requested analysis goes live. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.